Abby and I, with our two children, Lydia and Henry, purchased Richmond Equestrian Centre on the 1st of June 2018. We came from a farming background which involved arable, fattening beef and also ran a haulage firm. At the centre we have British eventing, one in May and one in September. The arenas have British show jumping and British dressage as well as unaffiliated events. We have three livery yards holding 30 horses and also have a separate yard for holding overnight stairs. In our first year at the centre, we spent a lot of time cleaning the livery yards, updating the stables and resurfacing the whole yard, generally making the centre as clean as possible. We thought the livery yard was overstocked, so we dropped the horses from 60 down to 30. We also had a busy time organising the horse trials in our first year of August 2018 and the war, one in May 2019. Both events had fantastic feedback and we were looking forward to the year ahead. Then the bombshell. On the 13th of August 2019, one of our livery horses tested positive for strangles, just two and a half weeks before our September horse trials. 840 horses entered and 40 on our waiting list, and we couldn't believe it, especially when the horse had been on box rest for six months. Andrew and I, our staff and livery clients, took the strangles outbreak at Richmond Equestrian Centre extremely seriously. As soon as the diagnosis was confirmed, we locked down the entire centre and remained closed for seven and a half weeks. We sought our vet's advice from the onset. We have researched as much as we could from the professional organisations, such as the British Equine Veterinary Association, the Annual Health Trust, the British Equestrian Federation, the British Horse Society, and this is when we also came across Red Wings the Horse Sanctuary and their animated video showing how they dealt with strangles in 2015. This video was very easy for people to understand, explaining the seriousness of strangles and the importance of good biosecurity. It was disappointing to hear a few comments that we weren't dealing with strangles the right way. A few people criticised that we were overreacting or acting like amateurs. We were told professionals wouldn't have said anything. To us, these comments were absurd, not professional and not the way we wanted to conduct our business. We were amateurs, but we like to think we handled the situation responsibly and professionally. We didn't know much about strangles, but we knew it was awful, highly contagious, which could be fatal, and the last thing we wanted was to put any other horse at risk. We learned to keep a very close eye on each and every horse, knowing the incubation period could be between three and 14 days, but could be as high as 21. We passed everything we learned about strangles onto our livery clients, and we started to take and record all the horses' temperatures, at least twice daily. Although there were other symptoms, like swollen lymph nodes, loss of appetite, and probably, most commonly, the snotty nose, a temperature above 38.5 was the first warning sign for us. I made a chart to record all the information and it soon became apparent which horses looked to be coming down with the infection. This is where the Red Wings Horse Sanctuary Stamp Out Strangles Horse Owner Pledge came in and we asked all our livery clients to take out the pledge. We shared it far and wide on social media. If you are a horse owner and you haven't taken out the pledge, please do so. We had already isolated the affected horse and its companion. No other, person was, um, no other person, let alone horse, was allowed anywhere near the isolation yard. Biosecurity became extremely strict on the yards. Extra equipment was brought in, and one vet commented the whole place looked like a hospital ward. Again, a small number of people commented that yards that had had strangles never acted this way. We'd never control it, and it would take months to get rid of it. This became our ammunition to eradicate strangles and reopen Richmond Equestrian Centre as soon as possible. Throughout the outbreak, we always kept our livery clients and the public in the loop. We wanted to try and pass on all the knowledge of the disease that we'd learned as much as possible and help to educate other people. We had a very active WhatsApp group on the yard, trying to answer any questions our clients had and appease any worries. It was a stressful time and I think it was important to Andrew and I to try and keep up morale. We would both like to take this opportunity to thank all our livery clients, tenants and customers again for all their understanding and especially our livery clients. 
for all their cooperation and hard work. They were all amazing, and I know a few are watching. Right, stigma. The stigma, the stigma that comes with strangles is huge. It's classed as a dirty word, and we're concerned about how it would affect our future business. What would, would people come back to compete, and would our livery clients leave after the outbreak? And what about the social media? It was very hard to answer any of the questions that were fired at Abby and I, like where did it come from and which horses have it? We even had people saying, don't say anything. Who is to blame? I can tell you this, it is not the horse or the individual. It is all of us. Whether we own a horse, run a livery yard or a competition yard, we need biosecurity in place. We all need to work together. We're not saying don't take your horses anywhere. We're just saying be careful when you do so. And be aware that even a horse that looks healthy could potentially be a carrier. It was even difficult to accept the word strangles when erecting all the signs with isolation and lockdown plastered all over them. And of course, the horse's name disappeared and it just turned to that ill horse. I don't get a lot to read, do I? Upon the screen now is the promotional video for Richmond Horse Trials. As you can see, the cross-country course runs near to the main centre and livery yards. The competition arenas, are where the show jumping phase runs, are just behind the livery yards. We were asked if there was any way the horse trials could run at Richmond by keeping all phases of the competition away from the livery yards, but it was agreed by everybody that it was just too unsafe. We didn't want to put any other horse at risk. As you can imagine, the financial loss was huge. We had lost our British eventing horse trials with record numbers, and we'd also lost all subsequent field events associated with that competition. This was meant to have been our big harvest. The competition centre was closed, and our livery clients go any couldn't go anywhere. Unfortunately, our insurance policy didn't cover us for strangles. Neither did the British eventing insurance policy, and our tenants policy didn't cover them. Some clients whose horses had contracted strangles were insured, some were not. It was costly for all around, and we had all lost out. Setting up biosecurity was expensive, with foot baths, hand sanitizers, spray equipment. The cost of the disinfectant alone was colossal. We also bought electric fencing in abundance so that horses which were turned out had set boundaries and couldn't touch each other over the paddock fencing. Extra water troughs were brought, so each horse had its own water supply. We were adamant there would be no cross-contamination. Andrew and I and our staff worked round the clock for over seven and a half weeks. To get the word out, we posted this on social media. Important announcement. Please be aware that we have a confirmed case of strangles bacterial infection at Richmond Equestrian Centre affecting one horse. The horse is in isolation and we are working with the vets to ensure appropriate steps are, to, are in place to minimise risks risks to the wider equine population. This includes reducing horse movement, cancelling commercial bookings and events, and ensuring everyone is aware. We feel it is important to be precautionary, considering our standing within the equine industry, and to minimise risks as much as possible. These actions are likely to be in place until the 3rd of September 2019. We wanted to inform as many people as possible about the lockdown, and we're quite amazed that this reached over nearly 40,000 people. And our first blood, which was the blood test, most horses allowed the blood to be taken, but a few didn't. But we managed to get them all and place them in the correct isolation yard. The red yard was for the positive horses, the amber yard was for the grey area horses, and the green yard was for the negative horses. Then, of course, all the red yard received a guttural pouch procedure. Most had one or two, but we had one needing nine. This process eliminates the possibility of any of the horses becoming a carrier. And at the same time, we had to keep the morale up of our livery clients and as well as of our own. And the only thing that really, the, the complaints from our livery clients, clients was that the disinfecting was actually damaging the footwear. <laughs> Controlling the situation was difficult. I don't think anyone likes to feel controlled or told what to do or how to do it, but we had to be strict. Clients were told to come to the centre, tend to their horse, then leave. No chatting to others, no going into the other yards. We had to ensure there was absolutely no chance of cross-contamination. 
This was such a difficult time. When we were up to five infected horses, we were all very stressed and worried, but we maintained our rules and strict biosecurity, and the infection did stop at five. Horse owners and anyone dealing with horses has a massive responsibility when it comes to biosecurity. Educating people not to touch horses, especially their noses, not to let horses touch each other, especially nose to nose, not to share feed and water buckets, not to share tack or yard equipment. It's all relevant. The infection can survive in the environment for several, several weeks. In water, it can last for up to six weeks. We have tightened up our control a lot. No livery horse will be accepted at Richmond Equestrian Centre without a negative strangles blood test. This is so important. Carriers of the disease can have no signs or symptoms. When one of our clients takes a horse off-site to another centre, they must demonstrate biosecu good biosecurity. Our manager, Joanna Coates, in the audience, <laughs> devised the following sign which the Three Valleys British Riding Club piloted at their entry stars final. 20 horses from the club went down to entry and they all used the sign on their stable door and we received a lot of positive feedback. We also give these signs to all our livery clients when they go off site. If anyone would like a sign, please contact us. One thing we did pick up on was external service providers. Vets, farriers, physiotherapists, dentists, nutritionalists, they all have a duty of care to the equine world and they also need to practice good biosecurity. We have worked together with Red Wings Horse Sanctuary and devised a new pledge to engage vets and equine professionals who move between yards. From the start, we let the livery clients <coughs> use their own vets. Because of this, we had three different vet practices working with, with Abby and I to clear strangles from the centre. Unfortunately, they had different ways of treating the disease and it became a little confusing to how to move forward. The disinfectant was easy. We just decided to follow the route of most farmers did in the outbreak of foot and mouth and used FAM30. But to do, when to do the blood tests and which antibiotics to use, they all had different ideas. We then took all information and went over the advice with our own vets and made a decision to hit this hard from the start. Blood tests were then collected the next day after the initial outbreak and antibiotics administered immediately immediate to the horses as and when they moved into the red zone. I also think guttural procedures on the positive horses, not only are we finding out if they are carriers, but antibiotics can be applied directly into the infected areas, so this will help the horse recover sooner. Then of course, there was Red Wings. The help we received after their Stamp Out Strangles Yard Manager Pledge was invaluable. We received a pack with information and isolation signs, and now we have a close relationship with Red Wings. We are one of their champion yards and try and help them with their campaign whenever we can. Indeed, they have asked us to spread the word about Strangles Awareness Week from the 4th to the 10th of May, which incidentally coincides with our horse trials. <laughs> nice to remember that. And are calling on all equine organisations, individuals and businesses to support Strangles Awareness Week by turning your social media yellow. Predominantly, we wanted to speak out because a horse can't. In the equine world, horse welfare is paramount and the horse should always come first. Andrew and I personally felt that as the owners of Richmond Equestrian Centre, we had a duty of care to all the horses, our livery clients, tenants and customers. Overall, we, get, overall, we gained a lot of respect for being open and honest about strangles. People and clients have said they trust us more for being responsible and others have commented that they admire the way we do things properly. Dealing with strangles in less than eight weeks also boosted our reputation. We got a lot of positive feedback on our social media sites. I don't think I actually saw one negative comment on, comment on social media. Everyone was behind us, supportive and kind. And as we all know, this is very unusual in this day and age. Hopefully we've managed to help destigmatize strangles. We've learned an awful lot about it. We've tightened our rules and heightened our biosecurity, and we will forever support Red Wings Horse Sanctuary in their campaign to stamp out strangles. We will never know who, what, where, why, or when strangles came, but we like to think we got more out of it than it got out of us, and we turned a negative situation into a positive outcome. Thank you.